We've had him on the show a lot over, well, the first three weeks where I was on air. Uh, now we've got him back in the new show. So uh, welcome to the Unified Solution. Uh, this time with real pictures, uh, Dave, uh, Dave Graham from uh, Wollongong, the concreter from Wollongong, who we know more from uh, the back of a, a truck in Canberra more than anything else. Dave, uh, you're having a bit of a lay day. Was it a big weekend in Canberra this time round? It was a three-day weekend, Carl. So, yeah, good. Uh, hello, viewers. How are you? I hope everyone's well out there and, um, yeah, psyched up to come back to Canberra. But, yeah, look, Carl, uh, we had a three-day weekend. we done Friday night at Glebe. Uh, we done Saturday at Parliament House. We had Saturday afternoon at 5 o'clock down at um, one of the parks on Lake Burley Griffin there. Oh, I love it. And then we done we done Sunday back up at Parliament House again just to make our presence, Carl. We... We believe we're at the pinnacle of the um, of this exercise, you know what I mean? And we're very, very close to actually taking this thing, Carl. That That is what we feel, the people who are in the know about what's going on worldwide. Yep. So, yeah, we've got to push, brother. And that's tends to three-day weekend just to make our presence known and, and be here for an extra two days rather than just that Saturday. So it's important for people to understand that um, many folks never left Canberra. Some have been there for five, seven weeks. How long have you been in town? Uh, I'm going on to my eighth week now, Carl. I've been yeah. home a couple of times. But again, funny, Carl, you know, I went home and the missus went to drop me at my boat because, you know, I go and stay on my boat when I go home. I got to the harbour and I looked at my boat. I looked at my wife and I nearly went to tears, mate. And I just said to her, I said, I don't even want to be here. I want to go back to my family in Canberra. Yeah. So that's what we've created, Carl. You know, that, like we've all lost a lot of members of family and things like that, but my family is now a group of people in Canberra who are like-minded to me, who are willing to give up everything, and I mean everything, to yeah. win this war. Because if we don't win the war, we lose everything. Well, we talk about this war, Dave, but a lot of people seem to have no idea what we're going on. They, they think that the only war in town is Russia invading Ukraine, in inverted commas. Um, yeah. So let's let's try and flesh out the war as, as it affects us, the way that we see it. Um, so uh, people might suggest that you're using words that are melodramatic. Uh, Ricardo Bosi has been accused of the same thing. Uh, oh, it's it, it's just, you know, too dramatic for words. War is such a strong term. Why do you use that term? Um, simply, Carl, that we, we are in a war like no other. I believe this is World War III. Um, it's a, it's a non-shooting, non-gun, you know, non-act of violence war. I mean, there's acts of violence against us or, you know, Ill, ill-gotten means towards us, but there is no one standing up. That should, and I sometimes wish the war did have some guns, Carl. At least then we could just load up and take a few shots and know what we were getting. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. unfortunately, this war is a psychological psyop war. Yeah. And the war, people, you want to know who your biggest player against you in this war is? It's the media. The mainstream yeah. media is their number one. That's their front line of armour of or artillery that's shooting the shit out of everyone. It's certainly where the propaganda is enabled the most, isn't it? Um, uh, and nobody seems to be able to combat that, least of all citizen journalists like myself and yourself. I know you're very active online too. You've got a very large following. Uh, what more can we do to get our message out, mate? Look, I think the message, look, I, I totally believe, and we'll talk outside the box here, Carla, you know, I don't, really mind mate I don't think you mind neither you're a truth seeker like me but True. but um look I I believe that we are at a place in this war where um we are about to take it the reason being that we have other things working for us right we know that we, there are such a thing as white hats Carl yes. okay and we know and, and I would presume that at this at this present time our white hat military as is actually in control of the media because there are things starting to drop out. So I think the mainstream media has already been taken over by the White Hats. They are letting the play run because we are watching a movie, Carl, and everyone needs to wake up. And unfortunately, it's had to, it's taken longer than what it should have done to actually wake these people up. Um, and that is because of the mainstream narrative. But I certainly believe that we have a control over that media now because I can see that media turning now and dropping things out around the world. It's so getting we're harder. Getting, yeah, it's we're getting, getting harder for them to hide. 
Yeah, look at Lara over there overseas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Lara says busting it open, mate. You know what I mean? And they're trying to shut her off programs half, you know, like, yeah, yeah beautiful. Yeah, you know you're right yeah. over the target when they turn you off live TV halfway through, don't you? Exactly. You, you know you're over the target when me and Mr. Bossy get on our phones and have a phone conversation and all of a sudden you can't hold your phone, mate. It's that yeah. hot. It's it gets that hot. Yet. It's funny. Yeah, I've, I've had a very hot phone experience myself recently now that you mentioned that. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. And a hot what iPad. Do, yeah, what happens there is, you know, when we get together, you get all these agencies coming in. So it's not one. It's Homeland Security, ASIO, the AFP. So they're all jumping onto our phones. You know what I mean? Yeah, to Try yeah. and, like, see what's going on. And, yeah, it just overheats. And, and, and re- the phones just go crazy, mate. It's, it's, this is a war, Carl. Yep. Sorry, people, but this is a war. So when, the attack is, you know, is actually on our freedom, Dave. That's what that's what's being attacked. And and the yeah. horrid part about this war is that many of us don't recognise it as an attack on our freedom. Yeah. No, people think it's about mandates and masks, Carl, but I'm sorry, mate. That's just the Trojan horse, mate. You know, the yep. thing that's going on, the bills that are being passed and, and that they can now, you know, and we know what's going on over here, Carl. You know, we know where the AFP is. We know, you know, we have intel, mate. We know what people have brought in, you know. So we know what's here. And, and and what's here is not to do the job. They've said, Carl, they said they want to clean us all out. As from today, they want us all out of Canberra. Okay. Right. But, yeah, but we're going to put the truth out here because we know. And I don't care if they know. So it's we just, know. It, it's just interesting timing, Dave, because uh, back in February, um, when uh, Hoodie and others called for everybody to go away and come back in budget week. This would be budget week, wouldn't it? So interesting yeah. that they choose this week to try and clean everybody out of Canberra who's been camped up now for, in your case, eight weeks. So Yeah, they know that, you know, that stream is coming down this weekend, Carl. You know, and I've seen other posters out there, you know, tradies for action or something. They're supposed to be all getting in their cars and coming down this weekend. So... Yeah. This weekend is going to be massive, and it needs to be massive, Carl, because, as I said, we're at the pinnacle of the protest now. We've been here seven weeks, going on to eight weeks, and we now need to make a stand. Yep. And we have that in the background. I can't tell you what that is on this show, but at this present time, I can come back on as soon as we do it. But at the moment, we're trying to do things in stealth and get them off guard. Yep. But um, believe me, things behind the scenes are happening very, very quickly, and we're shutting down all the avenues to this filthy Luciferian friggin' takeover. So they'll no doubt try and deploy all those wonderful little toys that they brought out in February to use on the people, the LRADs, amongst other things. Um, uh, I realise there's not much you can do to prepare yourself for that except supply everybody a set of earplugs. Well, yeah, earplugs. And we now know that some of the technology that they're using, Carl, um, like, look, we we have meters here okay there's a couple of us that have the right meters high grade meters to be able to read what these guys are doing so the thing is carl they duped us with 5g so just yeah. something for your viewers out there we've all been told how this 5g is you know this is going to do this it's going to do that well again it was a trojan horse mate so whilst we've got people up there with with pissy little meters that you buy at an electronics shop and i'm not having a dig at anyone we all thought this is what we were looking at yeah. so they get a emf meter and we're all looking at 5G towers up there near Parliament House and trying to watch when they when the signal jumps up. Well, what they do is they turn that 5G signal up at the same time as they turn on the energy weapons. Okay, right. but we put the wrong meters. We're watching the 5G. We're watching the 5G tower output come up, yep. but it's nothing to do with the 5G. Behind our back, they've got direct energy weapons. Now, I happen to have the meter, and someone else has one, that will pick up the energy weapons. Right. So this is where you saw the other week, someone ran up on the stage and Mark Max started straight away with turn it off, turn it off. Our yes. meters went off. So we have two meters up there on ground that really pick up the real thing. Okay. Wow. And when their meters go off, that's when we're getting burnt and fried, mate. So we're onto it. We know when they haven't used them since Carl, my meter has not gone off since that day. Hey, so are they, you they saying know those- that they're are you seeing the vehicles with the roof-mounted LRADs on the streets of Canberra, on, like on a daily basis? Yep, yep, yeah. Wow. But I believe that those are not LRADs, all right? I believe that they look like an LRAD, 
but behind them is the DIR. It's the direct, you know, energy weapon that does the, it, it penetrates four millimetres into your skin. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. four well, millimetres. That would explain the uh, the burns on people's faces and the inconsistency of depth, obviously, because if you're waving that kind of thing over a crowd, uh, at, it'd be a time on target kind of thing, wouldn't it? You, to get four mils, you'd have to have the beam on them for a bit of time. Uh, so if you okay, turn your head fractionally. I beg we've your pardon? We've worked out. We're not, we're not stupid people over here. You know, we've got a few people working with us and that. So what we've worked out is the people that drink a lot of water are the people that are getting fried the most. So if you're well hydrated, these machines attack you harder than they will attack someone like me who drinks a bit of coffee and not so much water, or I drink alkaline water and not too much of it. Yeah, right. So people who are really well hydrated seem to be getting more effect off these um, direct energy weapons. Uh, yeah, it's in fun what we're, what we're learning. Bodies are a better yeah. conductor when they're full of water. Uh, I mean, they're, well, they're a pretty good conductor right. anyway. Yeah, four mils into the skin and boiling all the water content. But if you haven't got water content, oops, oh. you're not getting inspected as, as bad, Carl. Yeah. Yeah, well. Well, so uh, we're learning. There's a conflicting message on a hot day. Uh, don't drink water, yeah, but drink exactly. water. Stay hydrated. I mean, how do you fight that? Uh, I mean, you don't. You fight yeah, the people holding the weapons, I suppose. That's... Yeah, unless you're there and gun them with weapons, yeah, then don't drink water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we don't want to go and fight the people who've got the weapons. So this isn't about this isn't about rebelling. This isn't about, you know, fisticuffs on the streets of Canberra. That's, that's definitely not what we're about. Um, but people are getting very frustrated. The Governor-General showed himself, but certainly... Didn't show himself to many or for long. Um, I think it was Graham Hood got a few words with him, uh, asked about uh, what he might do about this government, whether or not there is half a chance that he would come uh, to the fore. He said, no, 95% of Australians have decided with their feet to go and get vaccinated. So as far as he's concerned, there is no issue. Um, where do you stand on all that? I, I stand that their numbers are bullshit for a start. I don't believe anywhere near 95% of this country. We know that for a fact. That, um, you know, we, we know what we've got in backup with people who can't get to Canberra, and they're making it very hard for us, Carl, because of the fuel prices. I mean, all this is oh, happening yeah. for a reason. Yeah. yeah so, I, I, know, yeah. I know for a fact that there are fuel boats offshore that aren't being allowed to dock. So, uh, exactly. you know, they're, they're, they're just sitting offshore waiting to be allowed to come into port and offload all their yeah. fuel. Uh, this is a manufactured fuel crisis. Uh, I don't know yeah. the last time we ever used Russian oil to to, to uh, get our our fuel. Um, I don't know. We don't get our fuel from here anymore either. It all comes from Singapore, so God knows where they get it from. Um, that's got to change, don't you think, Dave? I mean, there's, there is the Moomba field. There was an oil discovery uh, a few years ago in, um, out back of Cooper Pedy. I don't know how how much further out back you can get than Cooper Pedy, but uh, they found, I think they called it the Moomba field, uh, capable of producing in the realms of 3,000 barrels of oil a day. Uh, good, I think it was shale oil, good oil, whatever it is. I don't know if shale yeah. is good oil or not. Uh, yeah. Now, that was an American company, I believe, that, uh, that found that, and I know that they did an awful lot of exploration. Uh, that's all sitting there, but we, I think, we have three refineries left in the country, and we aren't able... I think to refine refine oil from that low grade position into anything better, is it about time we started getting to know how to do that, building the facilities for it? Look, Carl, I think that the first thing we do when we take this country back is start to rebuild all these things and 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 get our sovereign people and get together with these people about you know which places of the land that we should be attacking or using you know for our benefit. You know, you've got to understand we've got enough. We've got enough resources and minerals and gold and everything else in this country, Carl, to not even take it out of the ground. We can propagate it while it's in the ground and make money on it because we have the, you know, when we go out of the fiat system and we come back into the coal back system, currency system, which is happening very soon, we we don't even have to remove this stuff, yeah. you know, because the system works. So you can propagate it. It doesn't even have to come out of the ground because you have a value on it yeah. and you can work on that value. So yeah. once everything's up in the line and everything's like sort of running in a, in a parallel system to what we've got now, but a, a good system, you know, we don't have the issues of having to take all this stuff out of the ground. But to get back to your question, Carl, we have every resource we need in this country to run this country on its own. 
And wouldn't it be good to see the mills fired up again? I mean, you're a you're a Wollongong lad. I'm sure that you'd like to see the yeah. steel mills. It was just it was steel in Wollongong, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, that and calm and you know, look, we all knew when they knocked out Holden and they not, you know, we knew what our country yeah. was doing us, mate. Yeah. Telling us off to the Chinese, mate. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And you can blame the unions for that. The unions were very proud because they were able to put so much pressure on the car companies. And I know this for a fact because I had a friend who worked in this job. He got paid $115,000 a year at Holden to watch a machine screw a nut onto a bolt all day. Yeah. All right? Just one yeah. after the other and make sure that it screwed that nut onto the bolt. And he got paid $115,000 a year, had something like eight weeks paid holiday a year, uh, and that was great for him. I mean, he, good luck to him. The unions negotiated that, but that's why your Ford or Holden uh, all of a sudden became a really POV uh, pack Ford or Holden, and you had to pay $40,000 for it. Whereas Hyundai, mm. Suzuki, uh, so many others came in and they offer all the trim, all the bells and whistles, and they can offer it at a reasonable price. Australians just weren't competitive, mainly because of the wages. Do you think there is ever an opportunity, uh, I, I mean, when we regain power, how do we explain to the people, listen, we need to rationalise a bit how much people are going to get paid uh, or we need to figure out a way where people can afford what we make because clearly we've got to start making it for less than we can import it because at the moment the ships aren't coming so you can buy as much stuff as you like overseas. There's nothing coming because the Chinese own all the ships. So, um, yeah. uh, so yeah. you know, how do we convince people of this? Well, we had we had a one very good, and I and I'm friends with this guy, mate. A guy called John Wilson. Okay, he's only two years older than me, John, but he was the head of a CMF at year. Okay, now now John's a very good bloke, and he fought. But the problem was, as you said, with these wages things, that was all done on purpose, Carl. All right, they brought you know the shill union leaders in to actually produce these things in the right areas to send our manufacturing down the tube, as yeah. you say a guy on a job that's watching a machine put a nut on a bolt getting 115, the guy should be on about 55,000 a year. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Definitely Nobody not. It's an important job, but does it need to be 115K a year? Exactly. Yeah. Now, look, we know, we've already done, you know, a bit of analysis on this. When, we've only got 27 million people in this country. Yeah. When we take this in the back car, we can give everyone a million bucks. We could give everyone a million bucks, easy, and then start this economy again, you know, with what minerals we have in the ground, and, and we could run, you know, we, we've worked out that we need between 7 and 10% of your money, and that yep. would be efficient to run this country yep. the right way, not building tunnels to fucking put kids in cages, yep. not doing this bullshit, not doing that bullshit, but actually looking after the land and the people. Yep. It is simple. The equations and the evaluations in there. We could give everyone a million bucks, mate. Let's go on our merry way. I heard Albanese come out the other day. He was talking about Kimberly Kitchen and at uh, the time we're filming this, uh, her funeral is this afternoon, uh, former Labor senator who died on the streets of Melbourne, age 52, of a heart attack. Uh, she was fully jabbed up. Uh, she'd been suffering uh, bullying, apparently, within the Labor Party, particularly three female senators that she had to deal with, the wonderful Penny Wong leading the pack, doesn't she always? Uh, of course, lots of great denial going on there at the moment. You talk about the Labor, uh, I beg your pardon, you talk about the union leadership who uh, managed to get our, our car industry knackered. Uh, they're now politicians because that's the payoff for it. So one of the leaders of that will be Bill Shorten at that funeral today. He and Kimberly Kitchen were great yep. friends. Uh, how do we wake people up to the fact that these particularly Labor politicians who've never owned a business, never managed a payroll, had to you know make sure that their employees got paid, have never done anything, uh, have, have no hope of being elected at this election? It would be worse than getting, well, I suppose, getting the Liberals back. But uh, at the at the at very most, we really have to go for a Freedom Party, don't we? We do, but look what happened in South Australia over the weekend, Carl, with the election. They've got Labor in. Yeah. Uh, so, let's get, who, who counted those votes? I know Dominion were testing machines yeah, in Dominion. Australia. Yeah, exactly. So we don't know. You know, I would suspect that that's a totally fraudulent ballot down there. Um, mm. But the problem is, again, Carl, at the moment, um, perception with people and mainstream media perception, Labor won. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. You know, any any, it's it's like you know, any what's the word I'm looking for? 
any um, advertisement or any, yeah, it, it's good. Perception, you know, it doesn't matter whether perception is reality. Exactly. You know, now it's way one. You know, that will help swing others. You know, because everyone will. Go, you know, look, I don't know how people think because you and I obviously do not think the same as the 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 person on the street, Carl. You know, and quite a few of our friends and family. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Hey, exactly right. So, okay. look, how do we do this thing? We got to remove this government, and we're working on doing things like that behind the scene because we are never going to get a legal vote at this present time. We would hope that, you know, we can stop these Dominion voting machines before we get to the national vote. If we get to the national vote on in May, I would I would hope that we don't. I would hope. That we've very well cleaned up this mess before then, Carl, and, and we're actually yeah. in a um, in a vacuum and a rerun of the government there by that time. So, so Dave uh, Albanese came out and said, uh, in regards to the Kimberley Kitching thing, that politics is a competitive sport or a p- competitive game. I think that's part of the problem. Politics shouldn't be competitive. Politics shouldn't be anything like that. If they were doing their job, they'd be working for us not competing against each other for position or power within the parliament. Uh, I was fairly offended at how Albanese described, oh, you know, and and I've heard it before, not just from the Labor side, I've heard it from the Liberals and just about everybody else. Oh, you know, politics is a contact sport. Well, I don't think any of these politicians have ever played against the people. Are we going to be able to teach them how to play a contact sport at the next election? I tell you what, you bring him out into a paddock to me, I'll fucking teach him about context board, all right, mate. <laughs> French. Yeah, un- unfortunately, they have the Parliamentary Protection Service to go into the paddock with them. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you know... They've got a rugby team together, and me and Bossy will put one together and we'll take them on on the lawns of Parliament, mate. We'll see who comes out on top. You know what I mean? Absolutely. The people, mate. The people. Because, Carl, you're exactly right. All these people are doing... Is it's a competitive race between them and their nut, you know, their whatever's in Parliament and, and Canberra, and it's to see who can get the most money, who can pass the most, you know, outrageous bills for the CCP, and and it's not about working for the people at all. It's a it's a race in Parliament to see who can get the most votes, who can have the most power, as you said, and who can rake in the most money. Yeah. And until that changes, Carl, and it's not going to change. So this is why me and Bossy are saying, just get, we just got to get rid of them. They've got to go. And we're certainly working on it behind the scenes. So what, we're going we're gonna to leave them out of there, mate. They're gone. Well, the only way, and I've, I've spoken to Ricardo about this, the, I think the only way that this can be done is to red pill um, the, the society, at least one red pill. Um, so at least we seem to be on the same page there. Mm. Yeah, the trouble is, which red pill, Carl? You know, like, because we're trying to get the red pill out of them, but the problem is the doctors are stopping the prescription of the red pill. So the media is stopping the red pill actually getting to where the red pill needs to get to, which is typical of our, typical of this war, I will say again, that we're in. You know what I mean? It's a, it's an information war, folks. And at the moment, the cabal are in trouble. I can tell you that. They are in big trouble because the information war is starting to lean our way. But, Mm. yeah, they're going to try and drag this thing out, Carl, because what they're going to want is Australia having an election in March and their Dominion machines actually telling us what the the election results are going to be. So we know we've got to move before this election comes in in May. We need, and this is why Rick and I are still here after eight weeks, mate. Mm. There is no going home, Carl. There is no going home. I'm just I'm just wondering how you prove your vote because unlike the American system, you don't get a receipt for your vote. Not that you can trust that that receipt in the American system anyway. Uh, you know, it digitally prints out who you supposedly voted for, and you can walk away with that to say, "Oh yes, well here's how I, I how I voted," and the machine spat out that I voted for Donald Trump was the example, but her vote was yeah. tracked and translated to a vote for Biden. So uh, it can be changed after the event. What are you thinking uh, by way of giving the people some way of at least fighting back against what we might call a questionable voting system? Uh, And if Dominion is involved, it can only be questionable. What about everybody takes a photo of their vote? Keeps it on their phone. I think everyone can walk into a local RSL club or a local registered leagues club, vote there. You know why? Because to get in the door, you've got to give your licence over. Yeah, now, how true. come we can have a 
them. How can we can have a system in our clubs that identify us and 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 log everything? Yet we can't have a voting system that does the same thing. We got to have it to enter our fucking leagues club. Excuse my French, but we can't have the same simple system to run our voting system on. Oh no, that's too simple. We need something complicated where we can muck around with the result. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we're just getting do, Carl. The programs are there. You know, that is a simple program. Those club programs, they're all linked. Yes, absolutely. In fact, I used to work in an RSL club. I can tell you they are all linked. And, um, and you know, it's very easy to send messages between clubs on that based on if you've been a bad boy in one club, good luck getting into the next one. Uh, well, you know, it's, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is a simple answer. But do you think they're going to let us do that, Carl? Not a chance in the world, mate. That would, that would bring out honesty and truth. So how do we combat that then, Dave? That's a good question. And, you know, like I was saying yesterday to the crowd that it's sort of come to the come to the fact that the only way to actually combat these guys, it's like a fever. The government are a fever. So how do you stop a fever or kill a fever? You don't feed it, Carl. No, so, you don't. Yeah, you yeah, starve it. Maybe, maybe at the end of March or maybe halfway through April, all us people that are awake, all these people that have been going to the rallies that, you know, are, are aware of what's going on, we stop paying our registration. This is what I put to them yesterday. We stop paying our licenses. Stop paying your house mortgages, okay? And if we got 30 or 40... Oh, hang on. You've dropped out. Lost the audio there. Sorry about that, Carl. So Turn pick, just pick it up. Just pick it up again. If we stop paying our rego... Our rego, our taxes, we don't pay any government institutions, okay? We stop registering our dogs. Everything that's got to do with the government and money, which is everything, because that's all they want to do is take money off us. Yep. If for everything, every time we turn around. If we all, as a conglomerate, refuse to pay them things and stop paying them things as from a date, we all got together and went, right, from this date, that's it. You don't mm -hmm. renew your license. You don't do this. You don't do that. And we just walk away from the system. Yep. Now, I don't think that's a very difficult thing to do. If you got the numbers right, if you had 30 or 40% of the country that have done that, they're screwed. Uh, well, I can think of a great date, July the 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, great start of the financial year. Might be a bit late for the election. Uh, we, we probably need to do it before then. Exactly. We need to try to get something going. So I was talking to the people about this at Parliament House yesterday, you know, and I just said to them, look, it's only a suggestion or an option, and that's what I'm here for, to give out options. I'm not here yeah. to tell anyone what to do. Um, but certainly I'll open up my brain and let people know the things that we're looking at it and we think could work. And I, I know that that's one that could work. Now, the sovereigns are quite in line with this too, because they, they, as they say, we've already won the war. Okay. Yeah. The, the government has been evicted by the sovereigns. The government's been evicted by us people. You know what I mean? We've told them, we've let them know. So again, we need to make a stand somehow or other. And yeah, you're right, Carl. How do we make that stand? How do we red pill enough of the population to make a stand and send the government broke? We have people who are ready to run parallel economy with the government, but a good economy. That's already set up, ready to go. There's going to be some teething problems. There's going to be some tinkering, but it doesn't matter. We have it. The basics and will they be looked know. after and the rest, as we found out in Lismore and anywhere that was flooded in the recent uh, catastrophic floods down the east coast of Australia, the people will look after themselves. Uh, they don't need government to come in and save them. The people were happy to go and get their own boats, risk their own lives to save other people's lives. Uh, that's, um, you know, not not to be disputed. And once they once they saved their lives, they took them to dry ground, fed them, gave them warm clothes, gave them somewhere to uh, to sleep and gave them a cuddle and a hug and told them it'll all be all right. You know, we'll get through it because we're Aussies and that's what we do. It took the government a week to turn up. So the people don't need the government. It's about time the government started to understand that the government needs the people a lot more than we need them. Exactly. That's exactly right. They need <laughs> us because otherwise they have no... Yeah, they can't feed their fever. Yeah, you know, and this is their whole, this would be their whole problem. So, this is a very I think this is a very good avenue for us to be going down. You know, and we've done some other things over here, Carl. We got things done over here that I can't even tell you about at the moment on air. Yep. You know what I mean? But yeah, yep. and probably not even on my phone at this present time. As you, as you know, we're all infiltrated. But yep. believe me, we're not all idiots over here, and we're actually um, you know, yeah, we we you know we're looking at how we can get this country back. Don't you worry. And we think we've got it.
So, so uh, Canberra this weekend, for anybody that's going to come down from Queensland, uh, the roads are open, despite what's happened with the floods. They're just slightly more inland. Uh, bridges are open, and I believe sinkholes have been repaired in places where they needed to be. So uh, it's a 13, 14-hour drive, at least, from the Sunshine Coast. Now, if you're coming from other parts of the country, uh, Sydney, Melbourne, no problems at all getting there. And I believe there are people coming back from WA and South Australia as well this time around. Uh, and, and some far north Queenslanders are on the way down. I know there's a, another bus run coming from there, or they might still be here after last weekend's Brisbane run and uh, coming south. Yep. So uh, going to be a few Queenslanders coming to town. There's going to be a lot of people coming from a lot of different places, Carl. So we've got everything ready to go. I think it's going to be a great weekend. Um, did we, again, book, did the, we book Epic? Did we book Epic campgrounds? They won't let us in there, mate. They've shut all the campgrounds down here, Carl. They've shut everything, mate. You know, they're trying to you know, they're going like, okay, so I'll tell you what I was going to tell you before. They've said that they want all of us out of Canberra today. They're starting a major offensive. Now, what we know they've brought in, and don't worry, these guys don't muck around, mate. So they've got two vans over here. They've got six guys in each van, and they have um, an AFB officer driving the van. The AFB officers aren't a problem. These other guys are UN, mate, okay? Yeah. So if we've only got two vans of six people, they ain't clearing out this whole lot of people here. They haven't got the resources to do it. So yeah. then we thought, okay, they might be coming at me and Bossy. If they take us out, they might be able to, you know, two, you know, only two hit, impact hits or hit two hits. Yeah. So if they took us out, that that might slow the thing down a little bit. But then we don't think, believe that. We believe what this is is um, a little put together. They've got the guys here, don't worry, but there's only 12 of them. And this is because they're down on resources. I know how many the AFB is down to do. But I think this is more a marketing plan to – to use and go, oh, look, we're going to get rid of them. We brought in the big guys and we're going to move them. And it's all for the media. Yeah. So I think I think that they are way down on resources, Carl. I know that their numbers were originally 800 at the AFP. Yeah. I know that number is a quarter of that now. Wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I've People actually heard. Handing in, their handing in their badges under stress leave. People who have had the boosters, et cetera, and no longer can work or they aren't with us anymore. Yep. Okay. And um, people who are just sick from the boosters and can't attend work. So we've got a few different areas there that are affecting them. But Carl, on the weekend, we had, and I'm not disrespecting the police here, okay? I'm just talking straight. We had kids coming up to us to say, you're going to have to move your car off the grass. And we just looked at them and I went, buddy, why is that? You know, this is our ground here. Don't come over here telling us what we can do with our ground. Yeah. Oh, mate, we've got new legislation out. I said, so have you gazetted it? Oh, no, but I've got it in my phone. I can show you. This kid's about 18-year-old, okay? Yeah. And anyway, he's gone here. I'll show it to you. He pulled it up his phone. I went, mate, I'm not looking at your effing phone, all right? Take your phone away from me. I've got no interest in reading it. You guys need to do the same as we do. You want to change the rules for the public, you gazette it and you get it out there in public how it should be, and then we may listen to you. Yeah. Now, the cops then went to the bottom up where people were starting to drive cars in on the grass, and the boys down there were very good. They just looked at the cop, the young kid, and they said, hey, buddy, we ain't here to shoot the messenger. Off you go. Yeah. And the, yeah. the young cop just turned around, walked away, and next minute we had 300 cars parked on our grass because it is our grass. We can do what we want. You know? yep. And... We just continue the day, Carl. But these kids, they don't they haven't even learned how to wash their breakfast bowl yet, mate. Yeah. These yeah. guys are straight out of puppy school. Well and being, they just don't know how to it's being shown both in Victoria and in Queensland that a lot of these uh, young fellas and uh, young ladies have been rushed through the academy and have been um well rushed through certain parts of their training just so they can be on the streets for these sorts of things. Uh, they must be terrified. They seriously must be terrified because they've been not fully brainwashed yet. They haven't gone through the entire academy. They've got a vague idea of some of the things they should know. Um, but as is clear in Victoria, uh, in Victoria, I think there are 1,200 officers. Every fine, every person they arrested, every everything is now uh, you know, able to be questioned in court and gone because these people weren't trained correctly. But, oh, boy, they could fire rubber bullets on the people, all right, and chase them through the streets of Melbourne just fine behind their shields. They could do that just fine. Mm. 
got that bit of training all right, didn't they? They did, mate. And that's what we're seeing, Carl. You know, we have some very good people up here that can talk very nicely to these police, and they do. They stand yeah. in front of them. What they do, and I've done the same, Carl, you walk up and down that police line and you find the guy with the eyes that doesn't want to look at you. You know what I mean? And then yeah. you'll go up the line, you'll pick the right person, you'll go back. Now, I've seen some of the ladies do this and have said to these young officers, especially the female ones, love, do you know that you're now sterile? Do you know that you are never going to be able to have kids? They have double jabbed you. They're waiting for you. And look, some of these women, you can see the tears in their eyes. And good, the ladies pull up then, but they yeah. make the point. Yeah. Now, these officers, they know. Yeah. Okay, but unfortunately, Carl, they're being coerced. They need a pay way. They need a pay packet. Yeah. They need to continue with their family. They need to do whatever they're doing. And, you know, yourself, when you try and tell someone you're either going to go on the street and starve or you're going to have this inoculation and do the wrong thing and we'll up your pay grade and we'll give you more money, sorry, most people are going to up the pay grade, take yeah. money and stay in their job, mate. Yeah. There's not many people like you and my car that are living on whatever we've got. You know, I've been here eight weeks, mate. My company has not worked in eight weeks. Yeah, wow. That's really, really difficult. Uh, yeah, particularly particularly as you're about to come into winter, and I can't imagine being a concreter, you do a lot of concreting in, in a southern winter. Well, we do if the weather's okay for it. It's not too much of a wet season. But again, Carl, yeah, do you think my job's finished here after we win this? No. 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 I can't go out you know, I, you know, and then me and Boss and a few other people, we got to sit out and start working out with his sovereigns how we do this because we know we're going to take these guys out, mate. They're going. They ain't staying. We've had enough, and the people have had enough. So they're they're out. They're gone. Now, uh, you know, then we got work to do. So, I've I've always said that uh, uh, the thing I'd like to see most on a ballot is uh, you know the. National Liberal Party, the Green Labor Party, and a box that you could tick that just said us, meaning us, the people. Um, I don't think it's going to come to that just yet. We've we've got, you know, a lot of other interested uh, parties, including uh, One Nation and, um, well, you don't want to call it Clive Palmer's United Australia Party, but it's hard, it's hard not to call it that. Uh, he fronts all the ads. He's got his name printed on every piece of party paraphernalia. But, oh, no, it's not Clive Palmer's party. Um, where are we going with those, you know, secondary parties in this election, do you think? Uh, look, look I, I think you're small independents and the only way you can go. But, look, I would like to see the whole of Australia turn their back on the voting system and not turn up at the boots. Wouldn't it be beautiful? That would be, that would be the biggest statement we could make up. Yep. Is, you yep. know, yep, you, know, well, you just spent another $5 billion setting up this and no one's even turned up at your doorstep, mate. That's how much faith and, you know, and that would be a very, very, that would be a big step forward, you know what I mean, to do that. But I feel we need those big steps forward before May. We need them in the next few weeks. And we have things planned, Carl. You'll be you'll be the first to know and you'll be the bloke breaking it out to Australia, mate, because we got to do everything in stealth. But we got a connection, so you'll be the guy dropping it out. When we drop these things and we drop these bombs, mate, I'll be the, I'll be the first one ringing. You'll be the first one I ring. Thank you, Dave. We'll uh, can, can I just tell you that I wouldn't be able to be doing this without the people because uh, they've, they've in fact, got behind me after what's happened in the uh, in the former incarnation of this show. And, uh, yep. and and they've demanded that I keep it going sort of thing. So And they've helped me get the gear together to make that happen. It's taken me a week longer than I hoped. But... Um, you know, here we are, we're kicked off, we're running, and your first show up. So uh, thanks for being part of the solution, mate. I really appreciate it. No, that's fine, mate. And I've got some other people you would really like. You know, the, met, the people that I have met over here, Carl, is unbelievable. So we got some really good people here who, they're just household people, but they've been, they've been watching this thing for 20 and 30 years. Yeah, yeah. And they're the sort of people that I've had coming to me going, hey, hey, Guru or Dave, whatever they want to call me, you know. We know you know what you're doing, but could I, and, and Carl, it's been incredible to sit down with these people. And this is how we worked out. You know, our government's very sneaky. Everyone's going into court calling them a corporation, Carl. Yeah. Okay, oh, you're a corporation, you got an APN number. Well, do you want me to enlighten you a little bit? Five years ago, they registered all the corporations onto a Form 18K at the SEC in America. We, we don't sit here doing nothing after we've been to protest all week, I can assure you, Carl. All right, we're working, mate. Thank so you. they registered all these all these entities like New South Wales, State of New South Wales, Queensland, 
you know, the Australian government, everything that was registered on the SEC with a stock, the stock exchange with a ABN number, yep. they have now converted and put them onto an 18K form at the SEC, which means they've given them sovereign right. So they are no longer a corporation. They actually are a sovereign, sovereign. entity. Now, what's the sovereign entity? Highest law of the land. This is how they've got around us, Carl. And people don't even know this. I'm, you're breaking news here that probably four or five people in Australia know, mate, about this 18K. Well, I want this 18K form out there. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's people, try and find out something about this. So it's, a, it's called Form 18K in, under the US system. Which yeah, I imagine is a tax. If you go to the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, and you go to their search bar and put in 18K form, you will it will come up and it will blow your mind on who is registered under that 18K. Now it was only done five years ago, we found out. So don't worry, we're we're chipping away at these guys and we're breaking them up, Carl. We know what they've okay. been doing and we're We've got big people working in the background to actually break all this stuff down for us. So I'm I'm only a concreter, as you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just I'm just hypothesizing as to why they would do that. Um, because they, because we were coming into their court systems, telling them they're corporations, and you got an ABN number, and we were correct. So now, without us knowing about it, they've changed their their title to a sovereign authority. And a sovereign authority is the highest authority of the land. So they've done that on an ATK mm. form. Yeah, so it's interesting. A sovereign can't be created by a government. Only, only the people can create a sovereign. Uh, so they've broken the law there as well. Uh, I'm really going to look forward to... Uh, I'm really looking forward to having another chat with Fitz, uh, uh, Fitzroy uh, Sterling about this because under Magna Carta 1215 um, and Article 61, what they've just done is committed high treason. I mean, they do it every exactly. other day. But what they've done by doing this is they've, in their mind, they've nullified the Magna Carta and the other treaty because they are now a sovereign entity power. Ah, the, goes to demonstrate a complete lack of understanding of Magna Carta, if that's what they believe. Yeah, exactly. And that's what just what they're going to try and convince the people of. But uh, this, this, this little bit of news actually excites me because it brings into play the real only solution, the unified solution, if you will, and that is trial by jury. That is giving the people the power back. We've got to get to that, Dave. We've got to get to that. If nothing Look, else. Carl, I think we're halfway. I can't tell you how or why, but we are halfway up that road. Believe me, we're halfway up that road, brother. Trust me. All right. We've done it. We've already done it. Oh, but we yeah. can't tell you about it. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, beautiful. Well, I'm yeah. I'm but very I, keen. I want to break that. I'm, I'm I'm itching here to say, give a couple of hints out that I can't, Dan, but... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put... America, yeah, well, I'm trying to know, put it together, Dave, so I can come down to Canberra this weekend and you and I will sit down, maybe over a beer, and uh, and we won't talk about anything you're not allowed to talk about. I'll just say that. Yeah, exactly, mate. All right. And then we'll um, let everyone know about it. But, guys, just, just believe me, like, have some trust in, like, we're only little guys down here, right? I'm nothing special, okay? I'm just someone who was put into a role. But what has happened down here is people have just come into the fold, mate. And we've got all these people around us. I've got a PA, I've got a campaign manager. You know, we've got everything. It just, it just is running, mate. And all these people have just come up and offered their time. You know, and, and it's um, unbelievable. The people who have come and offered time are the people that have got the right initiative to actually offer the time and do the right work, mate. So it, it, we're, we're on these guys. We got them. Yeah, and I found the same thing with just with the support I've been given by pe by people who've never yep. met me in person, who, who don't know me from Adam, really. They've just heard or yep. seen me, you know, doing stuff like this. Um, and and I, I am forever thankful for the support that they've given me, particularly over the last yeah. couple of weeks, because... Um, yeah, it was a pretty difficult time, and I've got some issues going on with my uh, with my daughter that um, you know I don't generally make public. So we've had our own little battles there, but um, uh, the people have just got behind me, and that's I think for me what has really been brought home out of all of this, uh, Dave. For people like yourself, um, staggeringly enough, to my own uh, amazement, people like me uh, are able to get the people to 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 follow at least or st start to understand the messages that are trying to be hidden from us 
And I'm really grateful that you give me the time that you do. Uh, I just want to thank you because, uh, you know, I think, I think we were brought together. The creator brought us together for a reason. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for playing his game. So, or hers, uh, whichever way it works. So, um, I'm all for playing thank the game and, 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 and our friendship is just growing and I'm, I'm forever grateful for it. So thank you. And that's, look, that's the Aussie spirit that you just talked about there and Carl, people knew that your radio station was putting out the truth. They watched you talk about a topic that got you whacked, mate. Yeah. Okay. And people dumped you because of a topic. Well, guess what? The Australian people ain't, st- you know, especially us people that are awake, we're not standing up for any of that anymore in any any area. So yep. that's why you would have got, you know, apart from you being a nice bloke and telling the truth, Carl, and, and a lovely guy, you've got it because the spirit of Australia is coming together. And we know we need to keep these platforms open because without these platforms, we are in total silence. Yeah, yeah. And and look, all, all it's served to do, Dave, is, is really elevate my interest in some of the most iconic towers around Australia. That's really all it seemed to do. Uh, and that's yeah, probably... Get down in Saturday and we can actually talk off some devices with our phones shut off, mate. You're going to come back with some big radio shows, I can tell you. I'm looking forward to it, mate. Well, listen, uh, you're having a lay day today because you've put in a big three days in Canberra over the weekend. Uh, this weekend, what's your advice? When should people be getting to town? Oh, look, there's things going on tomorrow um, with this budget thing. So we've got a convoy of vehicles coming in, in tomorrow. Um, next weekend, I've been told we've got tradies on the ground. So we've got tradies from Sydney rocking down here. So we're just getting a poster together now, Carl. That'll be out later this afternoon. Um, so look, there's going to be things happening during the week. I'm not actually organizing them. We try and stick to the weekends okay, sure, yeah. and look after them. Um, but look, there are guys coming in with convoys and that on Tuesday, there is a meeting place, um, out on the federal highway. You will find that convoy as you're coming into Canberra, no doubt on the federal highway. Yep. You won't miss it. Um, they're driving in. They want to create a bit of havoc around the streets and they just want to turn up at Parliament House and be a noise. So I know that's happening Tuesday. Um, that may happen again Wednesday. It will just be boots on the ground in Canberra all week. And then come Saturday, it's on again. We all get to Glebe, Commonwealth Park. We blend the two marches up. And why we've got two starting points, Carl, Glebe's probably another half a K or something down the road. So we do have a lot of older people. We have Bossy's wife who's in a wheelchair, et cetera. We have other people yep. like that. So we've got two starting points. We've got a smaller run. We come from Commonwealth here with the trucks and that. And then these guys blend in with us as we go over the bridge yep. and into the parliament ground. So that's how it works, folks, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, will you be flying drones again? Uh, are we going to get an accurate people count? The bridge seems like a great place to count heads as they're walking across a, you know, everybody's funnel yeah, through. Yeah, we do have a few. We do have some drones down here. And um, the guys that done it last time, they were professional guys that done that last count for us on that big day. But, yeah, I certainly feel that this Saturday we'll need them drones back up again and we'll have to do a recalculation, Carl, because I think we've got a big crowd coming this weekend, mate. I really do. Yeah, I do too, mate. And I think uh, there might be all sorts of drones carrying all sorts of different kinds of yeah. spectrum analysis type cameras on them this weekend too. And so. if you need any help getting down here, Carl, let me know and I'll get it out on our channels, mate, because we would love to have you down here and get a get a program aired from down here or something and, and let's do this thing, mate. Yeah. Mate. I'd love so to you do need it. Help, you know, we got people down here willing to help everywhere and everybody, mate. So appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'll be in touch. And uh, yeah, the gear's coming. So yeah, if we're coming, we're going to be doing shows. That's just how we're going to do it. Sure. We might. We might even try and do a few uh, lives, mate. We'll see how long we stay yeah. live for. Hey, <laughs> yeah, that'd be good, mate. That'd be great. All All right. we can do the All right, mate. Well, thank you for sharing a bit of time with us today on your day off. I really do appreciate it, Dave. Any time, Carl. We don't have many days off. I'm just calling it a lay day because yeah, I'm actually just like we had a little problem with the missus's car, so I had to chase down a part for that. And, and she's sitting in the background here, actually. But yeah, we're yeah. just um, we're just huh. yeah, we're just sort of trying to catch up, Carl, today, and then we'll be back into it, mate. But as I said, you're going to be breaking some insane news on here, Carl. Okay, because you're my you've got everything that we've got, and you have. You've got the inside to this whole movement, mate, because we know what's happening. You've got me and Bossy on the ground and everything that comes from us, mate, is going to be gospel and it's going to be what the people need to know. So thank you for giving us your program to actually do what we need to be able to do, Carl. We, we really appreciate it. Anytime, mate. Anytime. You know damn well. 
Uh, and I'm very excited to be allowed to be part of it. Uh, but, you know, anybody can be part of this. All you got to do is open up your eyes, understand, you know, you can be part of it. And it's so exciting to be part of, you know, when you really do understand what's going on. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Movement. You know, we have them coming up the crowd. You know, we got more people come up yesterday with guitars and that. Well, they're up there borrowing my guitar. You know what I mean? Yeah. They even bring one. But these people are just jumping up on stage and they've written their own songs about the movement. And this is what we want. It's yeah. not about me or Mark Mack or Bossy. No, you know, exactly. it's about the people's movement. We're exactly. only here to try and steer the ship and give the ship options, you know, and that's it. Mate, just, just a word to the wise. If I ever come up on stage and try and take your guitar off you, you better take yeah. the bottle of scotch off me because I can't play <laughs> the guitar. <laughs> no worries. All right, we'll do a swap on that. That's <laughs> cool. Good on you, mate. Uh, all power to you, and uh, we'll talk. I'll see you during the week sometime. Thank you very much, Carl. God bless to everyone. Listen, guys, you can get to Canberra. Get to Canberra if you can't. Make a noise in your own capital city at your parliament house. We need to let these cretins know we've had enough. We want them out, guys, okay? And that's Absolutely. happening. Thank Thanks, you very Dave. much, Carl. Bye.